everyone. Welcome to another episode of Five on the Frontline, produced by AIHA. I'm your host, Mark Ames. Today, we're talking about Virginia's first-in-the-nation standard on occupational exposure to COVID-19. Our guest today is Travis Parsons. Travis is the Associate Director of Occupational Health, excuse me, Occupational Safety and Health for the Laborers Health and Safety Fund of North America, which advocates for better worker protections. Welcome to the show, Travis. Hello. Thank you for having me today. Travis, Virginia recently became the first state in the nation to issue a permanent standard to protect workers from exposure to COVID-19. Help us understand what the standard does, how it protects workers, and what impacts it will have on businesses. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Uh, first of all, I, I want to commend Governor Ralph North Northam and uh, Vosh, Virginia Ocean State Program, for leading the way in the country and being the first to implement the ETS, which is Emergency Temp Temporary Standard, and now a permanent standard as of earlier this week uh, to help protect workers in Virginia. In my opinion, uh, the standard sets clear expectations for both employers and employees. It is a strong worker protection standard that lays out proven effective control measures to follow on the job sites across Virginia. Uh, let me get into that a little bit. A clear cut rule lets everyone know how to protect themselves, how to protect their coworkers, and also how to fulfill the employer's responsibility to provide a safe and healthy workplace. Um, that is a, what's known as the general duty clause and is always the case. And right now we're dealing, as we all know, with this terrible pandemic. So it's the employer's responsibility to provide that safe workplace. Overall, the permit rule continues most of the requirements that have been in place in Virginia for the last six months, the ETS, uh, things such as following uh, some of the BDH, which is the Virginia T Department of Health rules, uh, VOSH, which is Virginia OSHA program recommendations and some federal OSHA guidelines, and then the CDC uh, federal guidelines. What this rule does is it codifies them. So everybody has to follow them across the board now. Um, even with the recent rollout, rollout of uh, vaccines, a lot of people are saying, oh, why we don't, why we uh, implementing a rule, we have a vaccine. Well, even with the recent rollout, uh, we need to keep following all these protective measures, both at our work sites and in public health. Yes, the vaccine has been proven safe and effective, but the rollout is going to take a long time to be successful. And vaccines are by no means a panacea. They're a very big piece of the solution, but they are not an end-all be-all. That's super That's important. Thank you for emphasizing that. Yeah, the best analogy I've heard on this, I think I read it in, a, in a, maybe the New York Times or some other article, is comparing a vaccine to a fire hose during a forest fire. Okay. A, a vaccine is like a fire hose because an effective vaccine is a powerful fire hose, but the size of the fire is still bigger, a bigger indicator of how much destruction is going to occur. So no, no vaccine can eliminate a pandemic immediately, just as no fire hose can put out the entire forest fire. That makes so sense. It's just, yeah, it's just one tool in our toolbox to fight this uh, this virus, um, and also the vaccine is much less effective at preventing death, and, and will be a less effective in pre preventing death uh, moving forward if it's introduced in a population where the coronavirus is continuing to rage where the numbers are right now. So we need to do everything we can, both at work and in our public spaces, to curb this virus and stop the spread. That will in turn help the vaccine be more effective. Now let me shift to the second part of the question. What impacts what would have on businesses? Um, of course, you know, there's some upfront costs with some of the protocols, some of the PPE required, uh, even face coverings that are not recognized PPE, but are source control. Of course, there's some upfront costs to get your job sites ready, but quite frankly, uh, you should have already been doing that. And we're facing the biggest pandemic of our lifetime and employers have to do whatever it takes, as I said earlier, to provide a safe workplace. So they should already be doing a lot of these provisions and protocols to have a safe workplace. It's essentially just part of doing business. Um, many employers want to and have been protecting workers. Uh, I've been out there on the front lines. I've been working with people virtually. I've been working with people to help get protocols in place on job sites. Most employers I've, I've dealt with are really ahead of this and are, are happy to have rules to follow. So, uh, you know, they've been doing the right thing and following these provisions from the CDC and now it's just codified in Virginia. But unfortunately, there are some bad actors out there. Sometimes employers, it's a race to the bottom and they'll cut every corner and sometimes safety and health is that corner they cut. So to get their attention, I will just call them, for lack of a better word, bad actors, we need uh, enforceable regulations. Sometimes that's the only thing that speaks and levels the playing field for all employer, employers across the, uh, the board when it comes to doing business. Um, when everybody has to say, follow the same rules, it's more, it's, it's more fair to all employers. 
That sounds like the exact kind of point of standards. So thank you very much for coming to the show, Travis. That is all the time we have for today. All right. Thank you. And thanks to everyone for joining us. Five on the Frontline is produced by AIHA. Subscribe to our YouTube and podcast.co channels to catch the latest expertise from our Frontline industrial hygiene and OEHS science professionals. I'm Mark Ames, wishing you a safe and healthy day ahead. Thank you.